Hello friends. Today I'm going to show you how to turn um, a scene like D to a more cinematic look, more like a, an Alexa look. Uh, for example, from this to this, or from this to this, or from this to this. Uh, let's start first uh, by explaining a little bit the LUTs in, in, uh, in general. LUTs are not the end all. Um, because of the differences in, um, in the lighting conditions and uh, the temperature uh, and the contrast of the lens or, or, the, or the format that you're recording in, each LUT cannot do, cannot do anything that any other LUT can do um, for the same footage or different footage. Basically, you need to always modify your LUTs. Um, so what I'm going to be showing you, I'm going to give you a way, two LUTs for you, for uh, sp specifically for Cine like D. However, I'll show you how to, um, to modify them so they actually provide the right uh, output. Uh, just the dragging and dropping a LUT, it won't be enough. Uh, so first, let's try a little bit to understand what we're doing here. You will see that a lot, some of the look that uh, I'm going to be um, uh, working on is kind of like HDR-ish. Um, a lot of people are putting off uh, themselves uh, about HDR. Uh, they really hate it, and I do too. However, uh, if you see how... Um, Film cameras back in the 60s, like the, the big cameras of the 60s, the big film of the 60s, like the VistaVision, uh, used to um, uh, to capture information. It was, in, in a sense, a little bit HDR-ish. There were not visible um, uh, shadows too much. Even, and that's not, that's not because of the tungsten lights, but it was uh, uh, because the, the film itself had a very specific characteristics. Since then, uh, especially after the late 80s, film started changing and became more digital-like, in fact, more like positive film. Um, so when somebody says, uh, you know, I want a cinematic look, at least for me, that I'm of, of some age, I'm in my 40s, so for me, the cinematic look is really the classic Hollywood era look, not what we get today. Today, no matter if you're shooting with film or sh or you're shooting with an Aria Alexa, you can pretty much get the same look. There's not much of a difference because film is much more accurate now than it used to be. But it's that magic of the 1960s and the 70s and 80s um, that cre creates that kind of look that um, that is simply not a we're not able to reproduce uh, with uh, with digital. So I'll show you a few uh, pictures here. I I. Um, a uh, screen grab from uh, To Catch a Thief from 1958, I think. We shot on Vista Vision. This is a rescan of the film, uh, higher resolution, and you can see that it doesn't really look like a digital image that comes out of the of a digital camera. Uh, it it has this negative look. This a, a little bit more HDR-ish than uh, you would expect. Uh, beautiful colors, Technicolor, of course, uh, and look at the faces here. Look how you can see all uh, the wrinkles and all the stuff. I mean, today with the positive look of digital and positive film, uh, you can't see those details. Everything is kind of like uh, blending together. While here you have color separation. Each object is its own thing. You can see very clearly what's what. That's uh, the magic of uh, old film. Um, and obviously the color of technical is out of this world, of course. Uh, you can watch this movie, by the way, if you have a 4K TV, uh, check it out on Amazon Prime, it's for free, you can watch it. I mean, you just watch it just for the colors, essentially. <laughs> so this is what we're trying to, to come close to. We're not going to, um, uh, to, of course, achieve this look because it's not possible with digital to, to achieve this look exactly. But we can come close to the qualities of it, uh, to a base image, let's say, that then, from then on you can actually work on uh, later by adding a film convert or the impulse LUTs or other uh, techniques. But uh, you can start um, uh, just the, with this as base. So in order um, to, to use my LUTs, you'll have to shoot as uh, shown here. Um, contrast minus two, sharpness minus two, noise minus two, saturation minus five. And then you have to go to the highlights and shadows um, 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 uh, menu and change the shadows to, to, to plus two or plus three, depending which lens you're using. If you're using a very uh, modern lens, like the Panasonic lenses, for example, 
you have to um, uh, have less contrast. So either a plus on shadows, minus on contrast. Uh, highlights always are minus five. If you're using uh, the vintage lenses, you can leave it, uh, those things at minus two and plus two. And set your zebras at 90%. Never, try to uh, never over uh, overexpose essentially because a film by default has very good highlight retention. So you have to be able to uh, uh, to emulate that. Of course, you ha if uh, your subject uh, is too dark after you, um, um, you expose for the highlights, you obviously need to bring some lights. I mean, that's the filmmaking and videography, the uh, videographing way of doing things, right? All right, so let's go back to the tutorial. So let's start with, uh, uh, for, uh, I'm going to show you something first. This is one of the looks that I put together. This is with a Panasonic lens, as you can see how punchy it is by itself. But if you start with something that it's not as punchy, this is a seven artisans lens. You see how much less contrast it's got. Uh, and I love this vintage look. It's supposed to be soft. Film was soft. So uh, simply then all you, uh, all you have to do is I have created I said, two LUTs. I have one called Cine D uh, Nature and Cine D Skin Tones. So basically the Cine D Skin Tones should be your go-to LUTs. And the scene of the nature is mostly for when you don't have humans in, uh, in, the, um, in the frame or when you're really under daylight, you can use that. If you have nature, uh, trees and whatever, it will look nice. But for everything else, really, uh, uh, you, should do that. you should use this one. So uh, you put it in, you get this. It's not perfect. It will never be perfect. You, you have to have one serial node afterwards and one serial node before it. And then you, you, you'll have to work on those. So here's what we do. Uh, we go to here, bring, uh, you have to check your scopes always, uh, bring your highlights down, uh, try to your, to your main subjects and, uh, and most of the things to never be above seven, six, eight. Um, this, is, this is a safe uh, highlight area. And you bring the um, you can bring the shadows down a little bit, but not too much. Try to be around the 100 line, so 100 for the shadows and around 768 for for the highlights. Uh, for this one, we might need to add a little bit of contrast, uh, just because uh, the the lens was very low contrast. Depends on the lens again if you want to if you need to add the contrast or not. Um, and then I'm going to add some mid tone detail. Middle detail adds, uh, I'm gonna go before and after, and you can see before and after, but it brings some definition. I love middle detail, a lot of people hate it because it gives that HDR look, but it's, in my opinion, it's needed. Um, so then we're going to the third uh, node, and we're going to go uh, to uh, um, Loom versus Sat, we're gonna create a point right here, and we're gonna bring this down. And we're gonna go again to, to sat versus sat, again, put somewhere in the middle here and bring that down as well. So what does that do? It's very, very subtle. But if you have many shadows, I'm gonna give this before and after, it's very subtle as you can see, but what it does, it, it removes color from all your black and white subjects. So everything where it's fully white, it's gonna become a little bit grayish and whatever it's uh, uh, black and it's got all this uh, digital noise is gonna make it black and white. So it's gonna be beautiful, like beautiful grain essentially. So this is almost uh, done, but it's a little bit yellowish. So what we can do is like use this here. I mean, you can, we can work with the temperature, but I prefer using this. And if you have skin tones, you just work with, with this slider here. So I'd say something like this. So before and after. So now I believe this is a rather um, pretty nice, I think, uh, cinematic look. And we can do the same here. Here's my good friend, Jad. Uh, I can uh, middle click on any look that I like and boom, it's there. It works before and after. And in fact, I would like this to be a little bit more yellow, the skin tone, so I'm gonna put this back in the middle somewhere, or maybe even a little bit, push it a little bit there, because uh, all the Alexa and film uh, look, usually it's a little bit yellowish, the skin tones. So there you go, before and after. Um, another one, let's go to this one. Um, middle click again, what we like, boom. 
beautiful image. And again, remember uh, how we talked about uh, the, the negative image. So it goes from like this to this, like a negative film. As I said, it takes a little bit getting used to, but after you watch, let's say, a narrative, a whole movie based on that, um, it's not really a problem at all. People will get used to it. So uh, this is a little bit too punchy, I'd say. So I'm gonna remove the contours from this and maybe even remove some saturation. There's something important here. Never put too much contrast and saturation on your final, final image because a lot of people will be watching your YouTube videos on a TV through a Chromecast or a Roku or an Apple TV. And those TVs, I mean, 95% of the people do not change their TV mode to cinema mode as they're supposed to be. They use, leave it on standard. And standard mode on TVs is extremely punchy and just wrong. You're not supposed to be watching a movie or any video in that way. So, be, And also, when you upload on YouTube specifically, Vimeo doesn't do that, but YouTube adds uh, another gamma on top of your video, so it makes it even punchier. So that's why your, uh, your final delivery from the editor, it has to be a little bit less punchy. So again, middle click, boom, uh, everything works. And let's see now here this one, if I try to get that look, looks great. Uh, but let's uh, try uh, the na scene the nature. I, I, for this specific um, uh, scene where it's mostly nature stuff, I like this one. I think it looks much nicer. It gives more color to the sky, uh, that teal little uh, color. In my opinion, it looks better than uh, the scene of the skin tones. And you can actually interchange between of them, between uh, scenes in a movie, let's say, in, in your own narrative. It doesn't matter. It won't, it won't look weird or anything. Same thing here. Uh, here I have the scene of the nature. If I put uh, and it gives more um, uh, more definition to the highlights, uh, while the skin tones it gives more definition to um, uh, to to the uh, to shadows. So and um, so a few more examples here. We can do this or we can do this. Uh, again, skin tones here. So let's go for this. Looks beautiful before after um, and. Here's another one. I really like this one. It goes like this. This one, it's very low here. We have to get it up. Uh, so I'm going to go, to go like punch the, the, the shadows up and bring the highlights a bit down. So before and after, it's a much more uh, cinematic look. Um, here we can do this or we can do this. So basically it's a one, it becomes a one click job after this. It's, it's quite easy. I mean, always you have to change a little bit, you know, your temperature, your, uh, depending on the lens you're using, the contrast or not, um, depending how you, again, have you shot, if you need to remove or uh, add saturation on the before and after nodes. But overall, it's a very little job that you have to do. I mean, this is the same image uh, using the, you know, the skin tones right here. And, uh, and same here, I'm gonna go, go full screen on this before and after before and after. And if you have the studio version, and I'm gonna show you now something. If you have, this only works with the studio version because that plugin right here, the, I have added this plugin right here, uh, uh, only exists on uh, the studio version of, uh, of uh, Resolve. So what it does is taking the very thin details, digital sharpness that exists on digital images from digital cameras, and turns it into thicker details. This is what you want because uh, film had very thick details. Didn't have much of details. Very, very uh, film. Film look is very soft, but it did have detail. But it was very, very thick somehow. It was not this strand of, of hair that you can see uh, the smallest details on uh, digital. You don't want that for the filmic look. So what you do, you use the soft and the sharpen uh, plugin. You, you do those values exactly, plus this one, you do the small texture all the way. And I'm gonna uh, go um, and show you before, I'm gonna go to 100% right here, or maybe even 200%, there we go. Before and after. It's not sharpness, by the way, it's not digital, it's simply adding sharpness. You can do that with maybe, if you don't have the full version of Resolve, you can add more mid-tone detail. But then again, you have to be careful with mid-tone detail, because I have here a mid-tone detail at 32. You can, you can punch it up to 100%, but it, 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 while it's gonna give you that look that you want, the, the filmic look, it, it will look a little bit HDR-ish, and it's, it's a bit freaky, actually. 
So you have to keep this low, around 32 for skin tones, uh, 25 to 32 if you have skin tones, and it can go up to 50%. Uh, if uh, you just have nature, it doesn't matter with nature. It doesn't, no matter how much you put in there. I'm going to add some um, here, let's say 100%. Boom, before and after, you see, before and after, looks great uh, with a mid on detail. But um, you don't have to go that high, 50 for uh, for nature and up to 32 for uh, for skin tones but if you do have this the um, uh, the full version absolutely suggest this this is a magical uh plugin and i'm pretty sure hollywood uses that a lot to emulate film and if you have um uh, the, again the full version of uh of uh resolve you can add also some fill grain although i, I would i would suggest that um the coolest thing that you can do if you have the money is to actually get film convert on top of what you've done here. So you have the base that we created and then you add film convert on top. And as you can see, boom, an even more filmic uh, look than before. So, um, so yeah, I mean, at the end, it's another 200 bucks, almost $180 for a film convert plus 300 bucks for the resolve if you already don't have it. Uh, but I think um, if you want a very accurate uh, film look, you have to do those purchases. Otherwise, you can again you can stay um, you can stay with a with a normal version uh, uh, using the the tricks that I show you today. It's gonna still be good. It's just not gonna be a hundred percent there. I mean, you can do everything with LUTs. Some of it is uh, it's about modifying the texture of the image not just the colors and lots can only change colors so it's um, you know it's a limitation i guess <laughs> so let me know if you have any questions you can find the zip file for the two um for the two lots that i'm going to provide uh on um, uh, on the description below um you know i hope you like them let me know if you use them um uh, or if you have any question questions uh, let me know in the comments at all reply. Thank you guys.